Fitzroy McLean from SAS Rogue Heroes, The Authorized Wartime History by Ben McIntyre. The Conservative Member of Parliament for Lancaster, Fitzroy Hugh Royal McLean, diplomat, linguist, explorer, was the latest addition to the SAS ranks. One of the bravest men in the British Army and one of the funniest. Like Stirling, he was the scion of an ancient and warlike Scottish clan. Unlike Stirling, he was an intellectual and a scholar, fluent in Italian, Russian and German, as well as Greek and Latin. Tall, erect, with an angular face and a dimpled chin, Maclean looked like a Roman senator who had just heard a very funny joke. After joining the Foreign Office in 1933, he served in Paris and Moscow with distinction and was tipped as one to watch in the diplomatic service. He was determined to join the armed forces and go to war, but under wartime rules, the diplomatic service was classed as a reserved occupation, which meant that, to his intense frustration, he was forbidden to leave his official post on the Russia desk. Having tried and failed to persuade the Foreign Office to let him go, McLean hit on a solution that appealed to his finely honed sense of the ridiculous. The fine print of Foreign Office regulations stated that officials must resign if elected to Parliament. To his own astonishment and the fury of his superiors, McLean managed to win a by-election in Lancaster in October 1941, after one of the shortest political campaigns on record. He immediately quit the diplomatic service, enlisted with the Cameron Highlanders as a private, and was deployed to North Africa. One night in Cairo, late in 1941, at a dinner party, McLean fell into conversation with a tall, dark, strongly built young man with a manner that was unusually vague, but sometimes extremely alert. Why not join the SAS? said David Sterling, who had briefly met Fitzroy McLean before the war. What is it? asked McLean. A good thing to be in, came the enigmatic answer. It sounded promising, McLean later wrote. I said I should be delighted to join. Fitzroy Maclean, now commissioned as a lieutenant, arrived in Cabrit in mid-January 1942 and was shown to an empty tent by a large guardsman from Aberdeen who informed him that its previous occupant had been Bill Fraser, adding lugubriously, The poor gentleman will not be requiring it any more. McLean had barely settled in when a wild-looking figure with a beard appeared through the tent flap carrying a small dog and demanded his bed back. McLean was deeply impressed by the tale of Fraser's epic track across the desert, keeping himself alive by drinking rusty water from the radiators of derelict trucks. In 1943, Fitzroy McLean led Churchill's mission to Yugoslavia's partisan leader, General Tito. He described his role as simply to find out who was killing the most Germans and to suggest means by which we could help them to kill.
kill more. Randolph Churchill was also a member of the mission, and he brought in the novelist Evelyn Waugh. After the war, Maclean was promoted to the local rank of Major General and returned to the UK to take up his parliamentary seat. He served as a Member of Parliament until 1959 while administering the family estate in Argyll and running a hotel on the shores of Loch Finn. In 1949, he published his acclaimed memoir, Eastern Approaches, which included a description of his time in the SAS. His decorations included the Order of Kutuzov, Soviet Union, the Croix de Guerre, France, and the Order of the Partisan Star, Yugoslavia. He was also appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire, a CBE, in 1944, honoured with the baronetcy of Maclean of Strachur and Glenslein, and made a knight of the most ancient and most noble order of the Thistle. He was also, according to some, a model for Ian Fleming's James Bond. Postscript in 1989, Sterling wrote an address to be delivered to the SAS sergeant's mess that seemed to capture the essence of the regimental ethos. Let me remind you that you must never think of yourselves as an elite. To do so would be bad for you and bad for your relations with the army and it would undermine those splendid qualities to which you are wedded of humility and success and of a constant sense of humour. No, you are not an elite force. You are something more distinguished, something of which you can be far more proud. The SAS establishment constitutes the smallest corps in the British Defence Forces, but with a special strategic role which is probably unique in all the armies of the world, and one which could save an incalculable number of lives. Hence the need for you to keep a low profile for reticence and for the practice of security at all times.